Let's see. Run yep, go ahead. Uh, share files. Share. Ah, I can share one screen at a time. Okay, let's do this one. Um, all right, right Stacey. Yeah. So, so basically trying to break it down into one hour modules as, as much as possible. Um, I don't know if it will make sense to do it everywhere, but um, I'm collecting it in, in this ex, as Excel file and then also trying to break it down to smaller mm. steps that we can kind of check where everyone are at yeah. different places and also put in small both breaks um, and catch up at time um, so that people can people who might be a bit slower they might come up a little bit later and so forth uh, and then also use this one as a way to orient our, ourselves in the wiki page not necessarily to use the wiki page as, as where we put the main materials but kind of where we put the lessons so that when we're in lesson one when people who are part of the experience, whether if it is online, if it's as a teacher, or if it's from somewhere else, they know where to go. They, they know that for lesson one, they go to welcome and oversee introduction, and then they have all of the material there where it's needed. Um, I'm still experimenting a little bit with transclusion. I'm, I haven't got yeah. everything. No, that looks yeah. great. Uh, that's a start of an awesome looking template there. That's great, yeah. Um, one problem I'm having is to how to transclude only one section from a main article. So for for I only managed to to get an entire article from another place. But if there's any like wiki experts out there, then it would be great to to get a little bit information on how to do that. Um, and then the other part is of course to do the actual breaking down. Uh, I haven't put which time it is so that we can reorient it however we want to. Um, and it would be nice maybe to go over quite quickly the different days, uh, what we're thinking we will do when, um, if, um, so that I can work from that onwards. Uh, and also yeah. as we go forward to get people online, um, for example, I saw that someone is working on KiCad. So maybe me and the person working on KiCad can, can meet once a week. Uh, and if, I don't know if, if Alvaro or Eric also have some focus points, it would be great to get meeting up with Tell them as well. And about what, what's your issue months. regarding wiki templates and transclusion is? Uh, so yeah, so the issue is, um, for example, if I'm going to transclude, uh, that's, I can show you. So if I'm going to transclude from a main namespace, I can transclude uh, with colon and then just the article name. Uh, colon but I'm article name, OK. That's but, but, but I'm supposed to, And that works. But I'm supposed to be able to get only, like for example, chapter one from that article, chapter two from that yeah. article. Uh, and I've looked on the media wiki, wiki uh, and a normal wiki and they have different commands for how to do that but they don't seem to work because when i use those commands i get either the entire page or nothing at all um so yeah um it's a little bit interesting um let me see so um let's see wiki Uh, with the transclusion thing, does it write out the, the text or does it actually just keeps it at the colon transclusion thing? It doesn't expand it out. Um, so yeah, so what I've done now, there was another problem because what I tried to have it feed forward uh, all the time so that we, if I change the template, so this one, for example, it's if I update the template, then this one gets updated. Uh, I tried to do that for the article pages as well, but when I when I uh, edited the article pages, then the templates got changed as well for some reason. So it's it's feed it back to the templates. Uh, so for the articles, I've substituted the transclusion. So subst uh, and then written what I want to transclude. I don't do it here because I don't change anything in it. Um, OK, OK. Um, so with a template, like the colon transclusion thing, that's uh, like the subst thing. It's 
it doesn't operate like that it it keeps it at the just keeps it let me see so if I, if I use the subs uh, then it substitute with the current template and then if I update the template it will not change my article which has used that template uh, if I don't use the subs then when I change the template then whichever page which uses that that template uh, will be updated automatically. Um, so for example, in the info box Steam camp, this one is not some substituted. Right. So right. if I change info box Steam camp, then the site will change automatically. But if I would write like this, uh, then this code would disappear. But if yeah. I update the info box, then, then the updates would not feed forward to this page. Oh, right, right, exactly. Um, yeah. And how does that operate with um, the substitution with the colon, the transclusion, the colon? S can you do subst colon thing or no, that's a different thing? Um, that wouldn't. Okay. Can you explain the colon for everybody? Uh, a colon? A colon, col colon as in the, the transclusion. So yeah, I'm, I have that colon after the subs, uh, if that's what you mean. Um, what did you say about like? There's one syntax where you, if you use the colon, you 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 transclude. I comment. Okay, right. Can you so show for that example, again? If, uh, I think it is. Uh, if I do, there are different ways of doing it. Uh, I think one of the ways is. I'm trying to look at your page, how you've done it, on, to see if I can see an example on welcome and introduction. Can I see an example of welcome and introduction of a, let's see, where do I see a colon? Many places, but. Let's see if I. Maybe you can show it again. Uh, show show again an example of the trans like plain transclusion that you're doing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, what I what I suggest we can do is maybe um, yeah, this is good, good good work, and then uh, depending on where we get with the meeting, but let's see if we can actually get some content in and and allocate roles. There's a couple of people like, for example, there is Peter. Are you in touch with him? Because Peter's got some input on the on the KiCad lesson. Uh, possibly Jessica on the, on the plotting. And who else is doing any any related work? Um, yeah, you want to coordinate with all the people that are doing stuff. There's like three or four people doing stuff. Right. So yes, you get building this circuit plotter and plotting etching as well, or? Yeah, I think I think we want to go s jump back to the, like get really clear on the curriculum from the curriculum page, pages, like mm. where's our master? Let's take a look at the master list of, of the curriculum as we have it right now. So everyone's on the same page for working on that in small modules. So yeah, uh, this one was. was can you show? From... Can you sh share your screen? I don't think you're sharing. Yeah. The most updated one was the January. Um, see if I have the right January page. But yeah, everything in this is taken from the January, which was the most updated uh, curriculum. Okay. Uh, well, March though, March would be the 
January had a lot of the content, but March March was kind of like the refinement, right? Oh yeah, March didn't have as much detailed content. It didn't have much uh, detail, but it had more of the uh, more of the topics. So I think uh, for clarity, the important thing is the evolution of the topics of how the whole thing fits together. And we probably keep a lot of the stuff from the, the January, but we might have changed a few things. So don't necessarily have to evolve the things that were excluded or not included in there anymore. So I think the the day by day run through of March is what we want to be looking at. So whenever there's content from January that fills that, that's great. But there might mm -hmm. be some new stuff too. Yeah. Um, um, so one question regarding the March content. Uh, yeah. So you have uh, you still have the introduction. Yeah. Uh, one hour. So yeah. I've updated a little bit based on on the March uh, slightly. Um, so I took away the it's welcome introduction and then I took away the collaborative uh, literacy, which in January was in the first day and then I moved it to the second day. Okay. Uh, and shorten it a bit, yeah. which was also in, in the March. And then you went directly, as I understand, from from March document and from Jessica to the 3D printer, or at least that's her latest Pretty recommendation. Um, and so, yeah, one question there is regarding, well, basically the D3D printer. Yeah. In, in, I think there was six hours uh, scheduled yeah. for that and then yeah. in the design manual there were two hours for the extruder uh, but on the march i think it was the march calendar it said one hour for for the extruder uh, do you know if uh, if one hour is enough um, yeah the, uh, we're gonna have to tally up the numbers as much as we can when we look into more detail but one thing that can be done is the, the extruders I have a feeling that the extruders have to be prepared beforehand. We can't be building them during the event because mm. it takes too much time. There's, it's too... Yeah. Um, so I think we probably will end up preparing them unless unless we can s think we can f fit it all in. So there's also... Right. And then there's, there's a lot of different refinements we could make. Like, for example, uh, what, so I'm building uh, more printers here, but I thought, okay, we've got the clamshells, but... Uh, initially, we we said, okay, clamshells for max flexibility, and you can get at the internal parts. Now we can also rework it s to close each clamshell into from two pieces to one. That's another option. It is an option. It's like it's not as flexible, but it gets you most. If you study it, it gets you most of the the stuff we want. Still gets you a large amount of flexibility in how you can construct all kinds of different versions but gr drastic part reduction half on the printed parts well okay take a look at example the take a look at the for example carriage piece if it's in one piece you got to slip in the bearings and then you avoid four nuts and four 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 bolts minus eight parts you know stuff like that we can do that and i was thinking of to to streamline the build we can do that and probably save like an hour on a build of the axes, you know. If, so if you can save one hour, because there was one thing which I was thinking about was the free CAD. Uh, it would, as also uh, just keep on out, it would be quite nice to have uh, people to be able to print yeah. and design something in the end of the day. But yeah. uh, if you do a full one hour free CAD session, uh, yeah. then it would be quite tight. But if we, we can get one hour off from off the schedule, build, yeah. Uh, then that would be possible to have a full free cut. Yeah, that would be yeah. kind of a great first day to have. Yeah, welcome. Uh, and then they build the free the printer, and they they have a crash card in free cut, and they yep. make it extremely simple as a test both for the printer but also for free cut test, and they print it. Uh, if it's possible, it would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. that's that's right, and that would, yeah. For the sake of like packing the most learning in, I'm thinking like I, I just thought about it like over the last week or two, and it's like yeah, definitely <clears throat> get rid of the clamps. Sounds like a major major change, but it's um, doesn't mean that we get rid of the clamps from the system. They they still remain. Anyone can build it, but like I'm building the printer here, and I'm like, 
okay I've done it so many times and I don't want to spend all that time doing that mm. uh, <laughs> that was my conclusion so how do you uh, sacrifice small amount of flexibility for grand improvement and build speed which I think is more important for low low barrier to entry so I, I would go with it okay uh, but hey before we go further can you show me once again like the colon transclusion thing that the point you made because I missed it yeah um, I can search for it during the time if I find the actual code uh, which was supposed to work which doesn't work okay it's not uh, working for you okay yeah uh, All right. I think Eric had something oh uh, Eric Lotze wonder, do we have a unified curriculum sort of page yet? Frederick's Google clamshell, would that reduce mintability or access, or would it still be easily removable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it will still have to be dismountable, like basically disassemblyable. So design for disassembly remains, absolutely. Um, so design for disassembly, design for repair, that I think is a huge value proposition that changes our system from like I was looking at warranties like Ultimaker and Lulzbot, they have one or two year warranties. Um, and in practice, their printers last like a year or two, like if you use them. But the real value proposition there is if you can maintain it, repair it so easily that it turns from a two year machine to an infinite year machine, as basically as long as you like to keep it, keep it around because the, the replacements or, or modifications or upgrades or changes are so easy it's like five minutes like for example to replace a motor on our system four screws uh, loosen a belt peg uh, you can do that in like five minutes stuff like that even at the deepest level of repair like say you got to replace the motherboard that is still like uh, if you're good at it it'll take you five minutes you know which is hours in the other systems so mm -hmm it's huge I think that's gonna be how this system like over time really provides more value to people so yeah um, all right yeah um, um, let's see it's one thing which I was thinking about the modules lesson which is a little bit associated to to uh, making it more specialized but more effective mm. um, because it is it is hard to break it down in modules uh, and have it universal at the same time as it kind of needs an adaptation. But um, maybe modularity needs to be combined with customization. So that, for example, each lesson module might have one part, uh, which is this is the universal base more or less. And then if one part is different, for example, the clamps for for the D three D universal, then if they would build something else, for example, then then that's a separate section. So you build on a specialization mm -hmm. on on the modularity kind of like a module on the module uh, to make it more specialized yeah yeah uh, i think the depth of modularity can go as far in either direction as you like so the answer is yes uh, all right that's a that's a look up google uh, <laughs> look up depth of modularity on the wiki i think i have an article on that depth of modularity uh, let me see if you haven't seen it, take a look at it. Let me see if that's for real, or am I making it up? Yeah, it's there. It's a whole whole page. So uh, look at depth of modularity. Um, Okay. Um, do you have any blocks on on your side besides the thing about making the wiki templates work? Or, or... Um, no. So yeah, getting the general schedule uh, decided uh, and having it it would be really good as you mentioned to get it to know what happens in what day. Um, uh, I will use the March as the main part, but it is it it is not as detailed as the general area. And there are some changes which can't really be combined in terms of time and such. But if we can, the free calc part, for example, that 
I will solve quite, quite a lot. Um, are there any other people except uh, is it Jessica? She's working, has been working a bit on the circuit and feature for the ICAT. Um, Jessica, tell us what you, uh, any feedback on that, Jessica, since you're here? Um, <laughs> Jessica, uh, can't hear you though. Yes. No. Now, now we can. Okay, sorry. The mic was flipped up. Um, yeah. Now, Andreas has been in touch as well about his thoughts along the way. What was the question? I didn't quite hear. Oh yeah. So maybe you guys can fill me in on. Are you so are you getting onto the uh, an instructional for the the plotting uh, workflow? Uh, I haven't, mainly because I still need to fix the x-axis and print the part so I can I can do it. Mm. Um, but, you know, I know it's there. <laughs> I know you're wanting me to do it. I, I think um, my question about the ideas, like, this is the, moving forward. Are we trying to plan for way next year, or is this for planning for something that would happen July. online sooner? I think July online. So July now clearly you might want to look at the OSC calendar on the wiki. <laughs> oh, I mean, I I have looked at on and off, right? But oh, sorry, I just so I guess my today. question no, is called, more like yeah, OSC schedule. I'm thinking like remote steam camp shooting for like July one, mm -hmm. to answer yeah. your question. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder about um, I guess in any of it, just even even in the experience thus far, I wonder about like immediate like how to connect sort of the simultaneous connection and when the event's happening how to actually be engaging remotely in a really effective way oh uh, you're talking uh, about that's super challenging instructors or everyone all the participants all the participants yeah, and well, instructors i mean even instructors like us now i mean it's happening like you're working on lots of stuff but it's super hard to plug into as effectively as is possible right yeah. i mean as the vision goes right and yeah um, yeah it's i mean things are kind of scattered because like uh i'd say like some of the covid stuff we can blame it on that a little bit well i mean yeah. that's impossible to answer right you can't fix that but again well there's many in some ways it. it's interesting it's an interesting uh opening in that people are going to be they are going to be thinking about things differently and yeah it's like can you capture that yeah. in a really in a positive way in a productive way where they get to the feeling of abundance actually <laughs> right but it's just such no, it's, a it's such a trick to get past people's fear right now and yeah um, well that's right I, I mean there's that's a long discussion there really uh, but long. yes i just mean how you how we're trying to engage people like you know now in the short term we could use well, covid related activities but we need some we need well, the right for, project right where that's where the nasa guys could still come through who knows um but that would be an interesting way in the short term i think to involve people um in the collaborative process not necessarily in the regular steam camp um curriculum but maybe but th and that might be maybe that's more people who have participated before and they have done the steam camp already like they already have printers and it means upgrading you know to the pro and but but really actively doing the yeah. COVID kind of thing. I don't know. Well, it's look, I mean, so I, the answer to your question, like mm -hmm. I, I thought about that and it's like my new mindset on, on how the project moves forward is um, financial freedom. It's the bottom line. Yeah. Financial freedom means that you can do with your time what you need to do, right? And right now mm -hmm. it's like we get a lot of competition from the status quo, uh, from <laughs> people having different things to do, right? Um, right. So for me to like reflect during this time it's like you know this is this break because of the disease uh, I'm thinking when we get back out there we really want to provide those realistic options so my thought pattern since the next uh, last well since Monday about has been the OSC franchise like no nah, I'm not mm -hmm. messing around like even with a steam yes I am we're doing the steam camps but there's a deeper level than that and that is what i was uh, looking up osc franchise follow my log but i've been putting some time into mm -hmm. how do you I mean, sorry keep going yeah how do you get yeah. people in a replicable way involved like it starts it, i think the next step like when i think about it for me it's like okay so here's a business we we can show to anybody you can make like ten thousand a month 
uh, that that's kind of my my next milestone i'm saying okay we're gonna have printers we're gonna have a shredder we're gonna have the the basics like this basic micro factory package uh, you know i've talked about this many times but i think for now it gets gets very clear for me it's like why can we not attract enough people i think we have to have um more value in terms of that deepest level which is really like the mass creation of right livelihood that's that's the way i'm thinking right now so if we can realistically show here's a business model for producing 3d printers now 3d printers they're a billion dollar industry they're like close to a trillion dollar industry so if that succeeds that can provide many full-time engagements for people working on this so i'm thinking hey that's that's definite a thing to do um regarding the mass just, collaboration when so you we, say that when you say that part it makes me just think that we should go strongly after the school angle you know that was happening before this happened but yeah, which got shut even after schools are looking ways to yeah. engage the students properly yeah i mean I'll, I'll definitely pursue bac again and someone on your facebook or something mentioned connecting to the current the new president there which i don't know him personally but he is all into robotics moss dash or something i'll send you who he is um, Who are you gonna but they're going to be again? making a shift. I'll send you the the president of the Boston Architectural College. Okay, but yeah. someone in your network mentioned, oh, you should t you know you should talk to them. And I'm like, yeah, I've been trying yeah. to make that. <gasps> but it yeah. might be an interesting timing because they're definitely you know actively trying to do yeah. shift online. I'm actually currently teaching a course online and on site. But now it's all online. But it just I happen to be doing one of the people who was trying to teach yeah. the same course online already. So. They're going to be making, almost every school is going to be making huge shifts in that direction. Yeah. So I think that yep, yep. is a really, we should probably organize, I mean, in terms of the steam camps, in terms of the printers, and what you're just saying about the printer as the industry, I get what you're saying. I mean, that's a, and that's a already solid, the schools yeah. are already using yeah. those, they're already trying to train people in them, and, um, but it, you know, it's not done in a way like this is where it actually you actually understand the components about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey. Um, it's and like like what you're saying, like okay, there's the printer on one side, but it's also like we're not forgetting about any other stuff. But uh, no. take a look at you're the learning, kind of you're teaching all of it at once. Yeah. I mean, you're learning all of it actually. The coding. So look at the. I've been feeding to the collaboration architecture log, and I put up like everybody take a look at that. Um, but in there, I put up a bunch of stuff like how some of these things try to fit together, and it's always kind of expanding. Uh, but I don't think that m means that the steam camps go away in any way. No, that's a solid thing. We got to develop that absolutely. But I also think the the printer, like at this time when we cannot mm -hmm. run the steam camps as well, we can still be doing things li things like the printer. Um, mm -hmm. And the franchise idea is like that. I was talking to Alvaro about it. So he was um, initially interested in um, in the event planner position, and I don't know. We're we're trying to negotiate some things, but but I'm I'm talking to Alvaro saying, hey, what about start this damn business for producing printers in Mexico, right? Um, since mm -hmm. I talked to him and uh, through some other thoughts, I'm thinking that's a definite avenue to pursue to say, okay, like. We're looking for like the deepest level of commitment where it's about uh, full time engagement, which is kind of how we have to think. But there's some missing things like we like that means I start the Amazon store, the probably an eBay store, mm -hmm. Etsy, like with a 3D printer, get the marketing in place, a uh, few missing pieces there. I would mm -hmm. like to see the filament maker infrastructure with it because I think it's an irresistible offer once you have the printers, the larger printers and the filament maker. At that time, yeah. I think, uh, I tend to think it's it's going to be really taking off at that time. It's going to be unstoppable. And already I can see, like, uh, with the scalability mm -hmm. of the printer, like, I'm working on a 12-inch version right now, and it's it's relatively easy to go up to, up in size. And there's just a little bit of tweaking, but it's relatively easy to go up in size, and that creates a much bigger value proposition, too. So there's there's great room for a robust business there. So anyway, mm -hmm. but as far as like, like, so we had that NASA meeting, like uh, we met with NASA and we met with like Virgin Galactic people who were working on COVID equipment. And what we're seeing there is the same thing. Like there is no common infrastructure for collaboration and it's something we exactly. want to address. But when we look at it, we still don't I, have I hope they see that. I mean, and that's a challenge to communicate, right? Because they don't even, they're like open source. Oh, it means people making stuff in their basement. You yeah. know I mean? They right. don't have any... 
frame of reference. I was right. like, oh my God, how do I get these guys to understand? I think if they look at everything I sent, they would start to see the structure of what you set up with the OSE. I mean, the point is that it has a you're organized in a way of engaging people where they theoretically will be gaining skills to really participate. And yeah. there's a framework to really yeah. participate. And there is that, you know. Yeah. But, and I, So they could see, I don't know, if, you know, how much time they'll give. No, I don't think so. It, but, it's what I said. It's about we're competing with the yeah. status quo. No, it's not going to happen. They've, he's got a full, now the guy's got their Virgin Galactic and NASA jobs, right? They're yeah, not yeah. going to go right. venture too much into the unknown. This is a different world. We, we, we live in this world. Um, mm -hmm. But if we try to get any more people to come to our side, <laughs> it has to be a, in a way that you, you do the financial freedom thing. Financial yeah. freedom means that you are doing what your self-determination tells you to do. So we're trying to break through the economy. It's such a different paradigm than mm. the system. But mm -hmm. I want to be authentic to that paradigm. Like I want to make that happen. And it happens by uh, kind of like reinventing the economy from scratch based on collaboration, which if you have enough people that believe that, then yes, you can make it into a viable system. Mm -hmm. uh, but on our side too, we're missing some infrastructure. Like for example, what Andreas is doing like with the wiki templates, uh, upvoting the forum, the incentive challenge platform, and some other things like these are all parts of a of a scalable collaboration infrastructure it mm -hmm. all has to go into full-time involvement and real jobs like jobs like you know what presidents <laughs> talk about right or politicians yeah. it's about jobs <laughs> it's about unjobs for us right but but we have to be basically able to grab people's attention uh, at that level uh, we need some infrastructure for OSC to make that happen and uh, that's kind of like, so So going into the pandemic collaborations, our stuff is not transparent or easy enough, onboardable enough. We cannot onboard people fast enough. Like we need a little bit of more work on uh, some clear onboarding materials, training materials for collaborative literacy and free cut and all of that. Like the kind of stuff that we're creating with the Steam Camp. Yeah. But and I really think it's, it's a bit too what you're running into the same problem. Like, who is your marketing guy that was saying, don't, you know, if you try to shorten it to two days, you're going to get the wrong level of commitment. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? No, no. Which I think is true. Like, you get this sort of this, you're looking for the more committed. So it, it no, does, it's not that, the thing is that I think that, you know, you can run over the curriculum, but to start understanding how it makes sense in a design process and in a collaborative design process, it's just no matter what, going to take some time. Yeah. You know, like you, yeah. you can sort of introduce all this stuff, but no one is going to know what it means until they have more yeah. experience in all of it. You know, and so some will have translatable experience, others, most won't, though. Like, you know, like it's so, it is such a different world. And if they're not in design and they're not in architecture or engineering, even or any something related, they're not going to have any frame of reference. That's true, but that's at the same time we keep the nine day steam camp and then go for the deeper levels of immersion like the summer X, which mm -hmm. is not so much happening, uh, or like the franchise model, literally. Yeah. McDonald's. I think the franchise model at this point would be an interesting. I think you know, we'll have some because see how many people are out of jobs. Oh my God. There's yeah, such and an that's. <laughs> We talked about this yeah. being a time of opportunity. Absolutely, man. Like, uh, I think everybody's minds yeah. are shifting towards a different pattern of things. So it's definitely a positive time, like from that perspective, for work like OSE, which mm -hmm. is sustainability based and kind of like sanity based kind of deal. Um, it starts to make more sense. I mean, I did get a bunch of people asking exact those questions. It's like um, kind of through this, it filters out that there's more information requests by people with respect to this sustainability and finding out that the system is fragile kind of deal. Mm -hmm. So definite more attention, people are paying attention to that right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, simple things like on an infrastructure, like for steam camps, first requirement is gonna, you're gonna have to have 200 meg or better internet. We kept getting messed up on the internet. Like in, in yeah. uh, New Zealand, we didn't have the internet was a block, and the other Steam Camp internet was a block when we were in 
Tom's place. Uh, yeah. We got to set that as a requirement. It's like if you don't have it, find a place that's got like I would say like 200 meg. Uh, so you can sustain like 10 people at least, 20, 30, um, things like that, like for, for transparency of communication. And the mm -hmm. time zones thing, a lot of different elements. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. So uh, just... And they said... Go ahead. These remote uh, camps are all webinars, so they are supposed to have another focus on the nine day Steam camps. It's more about, uh, uh, is the idea to have D3D um, business plan webinar so people learn to how to build a 3D printer and make a business out of it? We can do and a lot of things. It's question, uh, th those are all options. Uh, the, when I talk at the franchise, I'm talking about like a three month immersion that could be remote too. But it would have to then at then at some point spend some time on site where you're like building printers like for a month or something like that or a few a couple mm -hmm. of weeks. Um, now you can do a webinar too. Like I mean, you can get only so much out of a webinar. But all of these are viable products. Um, to I'm develop. hearing about offices too. I mean, I don't know what it's going to go like. The, you know, all the stuff they're saying if we start stop social distancing there'll be additional peaks which i'm sure is true yeah. but what i'm starting to hear people talk about is like is their office set up for social distancing like can you actually maintain two meters between everybody and all of that so there may be ways to do camps where you just require a larger table space yeah require six foot squares and people can still you know it's it's well, just we could, a <laughs> we could give each person an acre we've got 30 acres Right, there you go. <laughs> That'd be a room cool to spread house. out. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, just like, just FYI, I've been thinking uh, about the the village model. Like, you know, you probably heard me say about, talk about the village, a replicable modern village that's um, a point of light, the OSC campus. So I've been thinking a bit about that too. And um, how do you structure that? And I was thinking that the fund foundation of any sustainable community would have to be a, an economic process. I do think that a 3D printer, like the enterprise on a 3D printer, can be a basis for such a thing, and then you can build out from that that too. But if you look at my lab and put a couple of notes on um, what the village model could look like, essentially like getting um, people of different product, <laughs> people who are producing different things, uh, but but organized as the campus, so, so delving into that and exploring what what exactly is needed, mm -hmm. like what are the very very specifics of technologies and what's the best way to do things, you know, like for example, uh, con t just to tell you like an insight here, like for example, uh, Global Witness, you guys heard of them? There's a TED talk on it. A, um, Global Witness talks about like okay corruption on material resource scandals like like some crooks you know thieving or polluting an entire country or his resources. Uh, how does that relate to OSC? Well, the the OSC Village Campus model is a way to address it. So, for example, if some of the biggest robbery happens around like say gas and oil or minerals, what do we do about that here? Well. Uh, today's thought for me was okay biofuels right so that's gas and oil uh, sustainable harvested biomass part of you know polyculture integrated agriculture well that that could be our response so scaling that kind of stuff is a is a way to address the big global materials based issues so why am I saying that well I don't know but talking about the village model the village model has to be at the base addressing some of the fundamental issues of material security um, it's kind of a, like a motivational aside for um, what kind of like why we're doing some of the stuff we're doing with a decentralized technology um, but anyway yeah. I think we'll maybe get back to to the point so I mean that's, that's related to to marketing in a way if, if, to think in extremely economic terms um, and so let's see. Um, yeah, but talking about specific contributions yeah, on Steam to, Camp. You know, even on that website, I just Global Witness. It says this is not business as usual, but what will replace it? I think that's the thing that OSC offers: is a, protect, right. is a replacement. You're not just critiquing existing retrograde materialism. Mm -hmm. It's like literally a model to replace it. 
Yeah. So yeah. I mean, think yeah. about the power. It's shocking for most. But <laughs> it's good. Yeah. 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 Like, but think about like, say the plastic recycling. I mean, plastics are like a multi-trillion dollar industry. So if people can actually recycle stuff meaningfully, which does not happen today. And people like most people say it's impossible. I would say why it's impossible is like, if I were to point to one thing is industrial grade printers. That means high temperature chamber build uh, build printers, which we're gonna do pretty soon. So yeah, I mean, we can get focused on very specific technologies that do change, but of course it's not about technologies, it's about changing people's minds and hearts, which is the real deal. But um, yeah, the work we do does impact that at a fundamental level. Now let's see, hold on, but, but let's go back to the STEAM camp curriculum. So specifics on curriculum writing I can tell you that we've got Peter working on um, on a keycad. So, are you in touch with Peter? Uh, no. Okay, should no. Con connect you, so you can. Yes. Uh, I'll forward you the message from him. And who else was working on stuff? Um, I will. I can fill in something on the plotting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, Jessica, uh -huh. myself. I, I could work on a, the printer, like getting the printer refinements. I think for me, like on a curriculum for the printer, like getting very specific to the hour by hour gameplay, the clamshell thing, uh, the improvement on that, I, I'm just gonna run with it because uh, I think I'll probably do it like the next printer I build, I'll, I'll build um, the mono piece clamshells, not two pieces, but one piece. Uh, cause it is pretty relatively easy. Can you but it show does take that? Time. Do you have a picture of what you're talking about when you say that? No, I what don't. Because it's exactly? not done yet. But when you have a clamshell uh, for, say, like any of the. Clamshell. So we put together two pieces to make, a, like, for example, the carriage, right? Print that out as one. Oh, piece. I see what you're talking about. You're saying printing that as one? Yeah. So and you then don't slip the to... bearings oh. in there through the side. By doing that. You've reduced the part count by eight. It looks like it. Should, I mean, yeah, it should work. Really, yeah, I absolutely, mean, it will work. Why it's, not? It's not Especially yeah. if the. Are you going to print the the carriage things? Because then, I mean, with that pretty when the three D printer, they're kind of flexible, so it would even kind of you know get smaller. The, you know, those big ones we were doing, the one inch. They get you can make them a little bit squeeze them, make them a little smaller, and then they kind of spring out. So cool. it would. You could plug right in there. That would be impressive. Oh, are you saying mm -hmm. like like print the actual bearings into the carriage? Before, you could print them in there actually too, probably, yeah. I yeah, was thinking yeah. of them separate, but the ones that we were 3D printing, those big ones, the one inch, yeah. they have spring. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, I mean, I'm not even going there. That's like part substitutions, but no, I've been looking at like for example if you talk about part substitutions there like each one of those plastic bearings right now costs a dollar 25 you can print it for like 10 cents in material if you but that's high temperature material that's delrin doesn't print easily on a I see. shitty printer yeah. you got to have a, a high temperature chamber for that so and that's when we take you know each machine's got say it's the pro it's got five of those axes that's you know five times a dollar 25 uh, 20 20 times a dollar 25 that's savings right pretty much but starting with a clamshell is turning two into one if you like conceptually speaking if you have to handle like four four nuts and four bolts I mean that's eight pieces compared to like two pieces that you then slap in the, the bearings into but I mean conceptually it's like oh yeah that's gonna be a major major time time savings so anyway um, let's run with um, I know what you mean Looking at the Steam Camp videos, which are already out there, I don't think there are many videos which we can actually use to um, give people a, let's say, non-remote instructor camp. So, for example, if we want to give it on Udemy, I think we need to remake basically all of the videos uh, to make it yeah, really... Yeah, a lot. You can maybe... If you saw the, inst the instructor recruiting video, did you see how they pulled out cut up some yeah, of those videos yeah we can um, use like a second here and there but yeah all together it's uh it has a lot of it's a lot of good stuff in there but but as far as distilled content it's limited very limited only small yeah. you can cut out like maybe like <clears throat> you know 30 seconds or five seconds from one video that's really usable you know 
Mm. Yeah. Uh, so if we're gonna do that then either in the next Steam camp we um, I can get gotta, back. I think all that stuff's gotta get made beforehand. Uh, um, ideally. If... I mean uh, we can what we can do is uh, we gotta show oh, some new footage. Appear. Hello? Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, Eric says he can edit. I think Martin dis uh, disappeared. Eric, do you have a, a microphone? Or working on those the social media uh, strategies? So execute. are the consulting team giving uh, logos and are these design materials or not? Uh, Martin, maybe you can fill in a little bit about 180 yeah, degree consulting. Join us, join us today at uh, 4 p.m. But what they're doing is look at 180 dc page on the wiki it's all documented there including our last meeting so take a look at but the summary of it is um let me put in the link 180 dc please so there's the link now the idea there is we, we talked about the uh, plan of what they're suggesting. So they're mm -hmm. suggesting a couple of uh, <clears throat> some partnerships, but I was pretty much saying uh, the direction is not exactly clear, but I think what I'm going to try to uh, negotiate is that we, as far as marketing, what are the venues, the keywords, what's the, how do we reach them, what are the procedures for reaching them, and the cost of customer acquisition, and a big database of that like that we can basically work from uh, mm. I think at the end of the day we have to find the venues so the venues are like from social media to newspapers to printed to everything and just get a big list of that so we have a good idea now there's other strategies we talked about was SEO which in general we I think we have to implement some like so that our wording and our findability is good uh, that's another thing we could do other things like the AdWords, which nobody's doing, but we have $10,000 in monthly AdWords that we're not using because uh, we don't know how. Uh, but there's different ways. I think I'm going to kind of drive at let's let's get a list of uh, venues and how to reach them. Uh, yeah, so basically um, like the core of our marketing strategy. Is it better to wait or can we already? Because I would like to start having weekly meetings regarding uh, marketing, especially for the Steam camps, um, both to get participants, but also for future instructors um, yeah. to you know display that we have a good uh, or we have a good thing going here. So, is it better that we wait until one eight to deliver the thing, or can we already start? I think we should. No, I think we should influence, work together, collaborate. Don't don't expect magic to happen. I think a process like this requires some guidance. So maybe like. Um, the clarity for me was if you look at our meeting from last week, if you want to review that, play it at 2x the speed so you you know you get it in like 20 minutes. But um, I, I think that we're still exploring like what are some of the things to do. But I think I think what we want to do is provide maybe like a little stronger stronger leadership in terms of okay, well let's just talk about it. well I think the SEO we do have to do like on one side, but I think outside of the SEO. Uh, they did mention about some partnerships because they do have some contacts with some organizations, which is viable. But just a master list. And that master list could be pretty comprehensive because it also could be things like, what about chambers of commerce, right? As like any city will have a chamber of commerce, which talks about local community development. We can perhaps reach out to them. There's universities there's online stuff there's a bunch of keywords that we can search against so we can i think just having a decent list that it's a task list and and of stuff that we can do in bulk in a really organized way i think that's that's probably it you know, like like for example mother earth news you know diy open source like what are the all the maker venues okay it's mother earth news it's uh hack a day it's these and that but we have to get very clear about the list and just go through it for every every time we we do marketing i think there's no magic to it it's it sounds like it's selecting the most key key venues and then reaching out to them and then tracking it 
Yeah. Um, yeah. And SEO and social. How did you discuss also marketing through Facebook and? No, we didn't get into much. We we basically were at the level of concept you, you see like on the diagram of all the avenues that we should pursue. So that's what they drew up so far and they were going to run with let's select selecting like a couple of those which we selected one was the SEO another one was partnerships uh, I think. Uh, and then at the end I kind of mentioned well we, all we really need is this master list kind of deal like we can um, because that kind of includes the other things we would talk about like so is the idea of a master list but as far as like how exactly do you go about a process for delivering that master list I'm not particularly clear about it I mean I, I was thinking like maybe let them figure that out um, but I think we you know we can put our heads together and maybe uh, guide this discussion a little better yeah um, because I mean, there, there's a lot of things definitely which can be done. Um, I'm looking at the. Oh. Uh, what happened? Um. Yeah, at the video right now. So, but uh, I can join the the marketing meeting later if if there's still if you, have, you will have it in one hour, two hours from now. Yeah, at one hour, four p.m. If, if it makes sense. Uh, unless it's too many people, but otherwise, uh, maybe we can start working on the parts we can work on, and then let's time to figure out the yeah, you know, like from, um, as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, on the wiki, like I'm trying to like see the the difficult thing about this has been there's just so many different places, and we can, I think there's a small audience in many many places. Like I don't think there's like a secret bullet to what we want, so I think that's probably what makes it so difficult. Um, now yesterday I was looking at like okay so if you look at my log from Thursday April 16 let me share my screen here maybe um, like I put a bunch of stuff like progressive world changing magazines maker websites startup websites um, maker magazines there's a page called keywords like we should start with that like what are the things we're looking for and then there is a page called keywords on the wiki um, uh, keywords so I mean per perhaps start with that open source hardware open source makers maker free CAD creator design thinking 3d printer circular economy open source technology open source appropriate technology open engineering ecology Ecological technology, open design, community supported manufacturing, second industrial divide, personal fabrication, integrated human, civilization engineering, permaculture, open source agroecology, flexible fabrication, digital fabrication, open source fab lab, collaboration, distributed production, P2P economy, open source economy, evolved to freedom, world's first replicable open source village, replicable open source community supported production. That's a start, but maybe we can prioritize some of those and start searching for venues for some of those key ones mm. um, All right. but but Andreas um, what are you thinking like what are some like for marketing what what is are some explicit things we can do we can definitely start getting at the over the wiki there's a bunch of scattered pages that tries to try to list things like marketing yeah. page or keywords page or maker websites or all that we should put that together but there's I think the problem is that there's actually so many venues that do apply to us that's part of the challenge here I think would you say or well it is especially since we're kind of creating a new paradigm but it is emerging so one of the problems i have a friend who studied this problem slightly and what happens in movements like ours is that it's a little bit like black hole uh, so information goes into it but no one outside the sphere can see disturbances in, in the networks around so it's quite so and the problem is if many of these black holes can kind of emerge at the same time so we might not be aware of of the other black hole which might be very close to us um but what, what can be done is to uh sorry black they hole as in what do you mean yeah, by information goes in but doesn't so come out once you're inside it's then everything is connected so once you're inside it then, then you are connected to everyone but yeah for everyone outside, no information goes out because everyone Every of these organizations use their own words, 
because it's emergent phenomena, so we should do. Yeah. Because they make up their own words, they make up their own mental models of how things work. Yeah. Uh, therefore, it's really hard for people outside to see what's happening. Yeah. Uh, until this, this kind of black hole grows and grows and grows and encompasses more or less the entire society, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> until it gums um, everything up. But there are a lot of like search tools used also in, in recruitment, for example, where you can search for keywords and you can see what's trending. So you can search, um, there's some search engines which searches for different social medias at the same time. And then you can see what people are using. And then it's good to use the ones who have high centrality in a network and see which keywords they use. So for example, uh, there's definitely a step by step process, which is possible to draw up to find out which the best initial keywords are. And then, then we test with marketing uh, to see which one works the best. So, uh, so there's the keywords, but what about all the venues where you unleash your keywords too? That to me seems uh, like even the bigger thing. Mm, yeah, that's true. Plus, it takes a lot of manual work. Uh, for and with Google AdWords, we can make some ads and we have to go to every establishment. But for for venues, we actually need to reach out. So it's a lot of manual work for it. Um, okay, goodbye, Eric. So um, Eric mentioned he asked uh, if so he had an email with the printing nerd and re responses regarding D4D reviews. So the question there is whether or not we can send D4D printers as kits for people who want to review it. It, uh, it would definitely give some publicity if the reviews is good. Yeah, we could do it. Um, so yeah, my recommendation so is that we, well, we have marketing as a task task force, and then we have we work through a marketing strategy, and, and we incorporate everything that 180 is yeah. um, giving us. We work with it in iterations, basically. Yeah. Um, so starting from let's say next Tuesday, to have anyone who come, uh, I will be in conferences. You can say like the same time as now. I will be in here and anyone who wants to come, they can come and then I will look at everything you have put out there. I will look at the marketing plan I did last December because I think there's a lot of things yeah. there which can be applied uh, and trying to put everything together as much as possible and then yeah. work from that basically. Yeah, um, I would say like, I think a good rallying point is like try to clean up, like get a nice organization, like you're starting to get get a hand of the templates like get a nice organization for all the venues and types of venues that we have to me that is still kind of like the primary thing it's it's the the problem with the audience is that it's like anybody and everybody but they're it's focused around maker diy maker diy open source it's very very much all over the place but let's just start listing the things that are closest um, yeah so, so collate all the stuff from the wiki that we have already. And and the, the bottom line there is, who is the email you send to? Like, what's the fee if we're gonna advertise there? Like, like basically the mechanics, like what is the process for, I wanna post on Hackaday or that, like, okay, one, we can start a project there, two, we can get a paid ad, like there's all these different things we can do. So we basically have to say, okay, these are the things we can do. This is the expected reach. This is the expected ROI on that, and uh, yeah. we can make a plan based on that. Yeah. All right. Yep. Okay. So let's uh, <clears throat> let's quit here. Sounds good. So you're calling for the meeting of the the marketing team on Tuesday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Excellent. S okay. Spread the word on spread the word on the OSC Workshops Facebook page and um, maybe give me a text we could publish on the Twitter and main OSC Facebook or something. Marcin, could yeah. you share uh, the link of the piece you are working with the clamshells? I think I might have some ideas, but I want to check out if I am thinking what you are thinking. Oh, uh, link to what? To the page where you are um, putting your thoughts about changing to clamshell. Oh, clamshell, no, no notes, printer? that's all actually in my mind. It's The idea is just that's all I I have so far. I didn't draw up any diagrams. Well, actually, no, no there is. What are the pieces you are there is wanting to change? Yeah, yeah, okay, actually, I started doing that. I think I'm going to show you that. Let's see. 
Oh yeah, I did. I did make some notes. Let me go back to my log. Um, Uh, when did I do that? That was. Uh, Alvaro, uh, uh, which is the best social media or, or way to reach out for you? Uh, um, right now, Slack would be great. Um, Gmail also. And do you have a wiki log also? Yeah. I got one. I can share you the link. Thank you. Yeah, I do not have a weak account yet. In your issue. yeah um I don't know what happened to that can you try maybe doing it again because I I approved it some time ago you might have not gotten yeah okay I will do it again yeah with a different mail I'll send you that when I find it the notes on that I, I did some yeah, notes okay. um, but it's about the Universal Axis, or you were talking about another part? Universal Axis, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I would like to have those, those notes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, about the marketing, the 180-degree uh, consulting team is providing digital material, I mean, Graphical design, logos, no, flyers. Um, no, I think it's more on a strategy, a marketing strategy okay. part. So, uh, if you can do some logo stuff. Then... Yeah, yeah, I will keep yeah. working on that. I uploaded some of the drafts I already made in my log. Uh, wait, how do you do your log if you don't have the... I I have an option to add a log entry. That's All like through the, the timesheet. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Because it's yeah it's Alvaro log, but he he's not editing the wiki. He's just editing the timesheet. Okay. Yeah. So. Quit here for now. Yeah. Um, so I'm posting the uh, wiki thing, which doesn't work, but which should work um, on the chats. Uh, information. I don't know if it's our version of, of Wikipedia or something else. Um, and also, yeah, so I'm, I'm good. Um, when you were gone, I showed you people the Kanban board. We uh, went through how to embed. And by the way, last week we looked on embedding Kanban yeah. boards from Google Drive. And it is possible to do the same thing with the Google Drawing. And then you get it completely without the sides or anything. Oh, uh, nice. You can't really zoom in or zoom out. Uh, but if you get the size right, then, then it works. Uh, personally, I kind of prefer to have the thumbnails on the side because then you can have multiple streams since there's only so much space you can have on one A4 page. That, uh, oh, I see. Both OK. Um, I feel finished. Is there anything more from, yeah. from you? Yeah. Just one thing. Did you uh, document how to do embed that? Yeah, uh, I wrote it in, in the uh, Kanban. Uh, okay. Page. Excellent, excellent. Hmm. All right. Okay, guys. Well, uh, till till next week then.
until one hour from now. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> See you. Bye. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. I might join you later, so. I oh yeah. No, if you wanna if you wanna join us at at uh, four p.m., go ahead. And Eric okay. Polliner's coming from the ether. Eric, what's up? Hi. How'd you find uh, this meeting, man? This is top secret. <laughs> Taking into those things. Um, yeah, I just joined the Slack and saw it. I thought oh, I'd okay. miss it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're wrapping up, so we'll see you later. Yeah, go cool. see uh, people are preparing. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll do the open source PLA pretty soon. I'm gonna have to do it. Yeah, I would love to see that um, and uh, make it happen. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, are, are we done from our side? Yeah, yeah. Let's. Uh, we're done here. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Looks like.